Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome back to Fat Cat Collections. And today, I'm going to do just a little quick rant video, uh, one of my opinionated videos I give every now and then. And again, remember, guys, this is just my opinion, my feelings on, you know, on the things that I'm talking about. So, uh, again, not to offend anybody, not to make any enemies with anybody, but you guys know I'm a big believer in a bang for your buck, whether that be with Smart Home Tech or Car Audio. Um, and, and, and watches, of course. Watches is a, is a, a big topic uh, when it comes to brand quality and the different brands out there. Uh, speaking of watches, today I want to discuss um, the Rolex brand again and some of the things I've been seeing on YouTube. Again, this isn't going to be a bashing video and I don't ever want to come across that I'm bashing Rolex owners or people who like Rolex. Remember guys, if you, you like what you like, buy what you like. The, the thing is, is I put up a lot of these videos sometimes because of comments I get because of things that people say on YouTube. And I can tell you right now, I can only give you guys my experience with different brands, I have over 152 watches in my collection, not all Invicta, I have Invicta, Aragon, Seiko, all kinds of micro brands, and I can tell you guys the experience that I personally have had with these brands and the quality based on my own expertise. And I will tell you that Invicta, again, is one of the best deals, the best values of any brand, hands down. I mean, you just really can't touch them for the quality, for price. Now, I'm not gonna say that if you were to go put that I take a, a you just and again I don't want I hate mentioning the Pro Diver but it seems to be that's the one that everybody talks about. I mean any Invicta. If you were to go take any reserve level Invicta and put it under macro and compare it to a ten thousand dollar Submariner, I'm sure that a, a real expert's gonna be able to pinpoint. Okay, well you can see how smooth the finishing is here, but to the naked eye, you're not really gonna see any difference. To to the average person, uh, unless you have a real, um, I guess uh, just an over, uh, it just, I guess, an overcompensated opinion uh, where you have the Rolex, you have to defend it. Um, the, the argument is that if you pick up a Rolex Submariner, you pick up an Invicta, that you're going to be able to look at that watch and be like, this is a night and day difference. And that is just not true. And I know that because I've, I've handled these watches, I've felt these watches, I've played with these watches, and I've talked to thousands of people who have these watches who will tell you, yeah, I have a Rolex. It's nice, it's, it's amazing quality, but it's not you know, $8,000 better quality than, than your, you know, $1,000 watch or your $1,000 watch, whatever it may be. Now, I'm not saying there aren't watches out there that are really cheap and inexpensive where you can really notice a difference, but when you go taking any Invicta Reserve level watch, including the Pro Diver, Grand Diver, and compare it to a high-end, you know, whether it be a high-end Omega or an Omega or a, a Rolex, Submariner, whatever, you're just really not going to be blown away with the difference. You're just not. And again, that is my opinion. That's been my experience with these brands and lots of people's experience who comment on my channel. So what I want to talk about today, uh, oh, and also just a wristwatch check today I'm wearing. It looked kind of familiar, huh? Speaking about the Rolex brand. This is an homage watch to a uh, Rolex Submariner. It's made by a newer company called Oceaniva. Fantastic quality. Uh, Beautiful watch. That what they've done here is they basically made a Submariner homage watch. Obviously, and I'm not going to discuss this too much because I've done a review on this already. And of course, you have an Omega-inspired uh, clasp. So definitely beautiful watch. This watch will be getting a lot of attention. I've been getting a lot of comments. Uh, this watch is really hard to get under about 900 bucks. Every now and then, you'll see it as low as like 680. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if I can help you in any way. Try to find one. Okay. I haven't decided if I want to part with mine yet. I don't think I want to, but. Uh, we'll see. I have so many watches. I have 152 in my collection. So I have a very, a, a very broad spectrum of, of quality and watches to share with you guys. So, um, so what I want to talk about today is some of these guys are talking about the Rolex shortage, and they're kind of bitching and whining that you know they that it's hard to get a Rolex now, and and that the price is twice retail. What I find really just comical about that is these are the same idiots who will come in there and be like, they'll get pissed off at. I know Invicta does with their stupid MSRP. I don't get it. I don't know why they do it, but you know they they. They do what everybody does, okay? Everybody has an MSRP, and if you pay MSRP, you generally are always getting ripped off. That's to be said about anything. Any brand, if you pay manufacturer suggested retail price, you're you're paying too much. So what I find funny about that is Invicta really stretches it. So for instance, Bulova on their Precisionist, you can get a Bulova Precisionist for about 280 to 300, depending on which one you get. Some are a little bit more. Um, I paid about 280 for my Precisionist, wonderful watch, I love it. Got to replace the battery, but uh, it's one of my favorites. It's not a huge watch. Uh, now, that's to me, okay? Still close to 50 millimeter. A lot of you guys are going to say it's a huge watch. I think it's like 48, 49. Uh, not a small watch, but beautiful. I love that watch. And I knew the first time I saw it on some guy's wrist, I said, that's smaller than I usually like, but I love it. I got to get it. So I did. 
Um, so the Bowl of Precision, if you go onto their website, they charge $750 for that as their MSRP, okay? And I think you can actually buy it off that site. I've talked to people in my last job uh, where I worked with thousands of people every day where I've seen these, and, I'm, and I remember talking to one lady, and I, or one uh, couple, and I said, ooh, Bowl of Precision. She's like, yeah, 700 bucks. He paid for that for that. So that's like if you're going to go into the mall, you're going to be, pay, you know, you, you have to be a smart shopper, okay? And so when you look at, that price, okay, you're looking at almost, you know, what, three times as much as what you can actually get it for, okay? Now, Invicta goes a little crazy with it. Now, some of their watches, like I have a Sub Aquanoma 5, the MSRP is 5000 on that, um, and I got it for about 300 So it's, it is comical, it is ridiculous, but I don't think it's deceitful. And if you're, you, you have to be a smart shopper. If you're going to go onto a cruise ship and just buy a watch because you like it, then maybe the experience is, you know, what, what you're looking to buy. You know, may, maybe you, you just wanted to get it, you liked it, you didn't care. Um, but be a smart shopper. We all have these little things. This is called the cell phone. But I, now, I know some, some of you don't have one. It took me a while to get one. I, I had them back in 2000 when I used to sell, and uh, then I didn't have them for a while. You know, with Wi-Fi, you almost, I almost don't really need one, but the price is right. I got it. I use it daily, uh, but you can look up information on this. So very easily, in a couple seconds, if you see something that you like, you can price shop it really quick, and if you want to get ripped off, get ripped off. If you don't, then you, you wait and you buy it elsewhere. So, um, again, maybe some people do get screwed, but I honestly feel in my heart that if, if you are, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to offend, I feel bad if you did buy something at MSRP, no matter what it is, um, you know, that you, you weren't smart in your decision, your, in, your, in your purchase. You weren't smart in your research before you made that purchase. Uh, it's just like back in, man, I mean, it's been a long time. I have three cars, and when I originally bought my car, my, my car that I got from 2000, my 2000 Honda, I bought brand new. I love the car. It's old, I, it, but it looks brand new. I, I've taken care of it. I buy cars based on the look, uh, based on whether I'm going to like them the day I get them or 50 years down the road. That's just how I am. So that's kind of how I am when I make any purchase. I really don't have, I really rarely in my life have ever had, I can't really think of any situation where I had a buyer regret, honestly. Uh, so, um, yeah, really can't, honestly. Well, there was the hip hop days. There's a few, there's a few, the orange track suit probably wasn't a good idea. But anyway, very rarely, okay? And so that's because you're a smart shopper. You make sure when you buy something, you're really gonna like it and you're gonna like it permanently. That's just the way I, now that may not be the way you shop, but that's the way I shop. One thing I know is when I was looking for that car, I know a fair deal for a car, and you can get better deals, but a fair price where you're not getting ripped off is 5% over dealer invoice. Okay, if you go onto a lot and you see MSRP and you pay that, and then you see a double sticker price, okay, you're gonna you're getting you're gonna get burned. And then a lot of times people are like, oh, they gave me, you know, I got a ten thousand dollar trade on my car. It was really only worth three. Well, where do you think they got that money back from? They mark you, you paid too much for the vehicle. So that's to be said with anything. So what I find comical, and I know Invicta does this, you know, that their MSRP is crazy, but nobody, nobody, most people don't pay that for their watches. They know what a good deal is. They know what it should go for, and they pay for it. Again, if it's a watch, it's really hard to come by. You're going to pay more. But if it's something that's, you know, they're 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 producing currently, it's a model that you can get. Uh, you're going to get a good deal on it for the most part. And again, be a smart shopper. But what I find amazing, and this is my argument here, is that these same knuckleheads will whine about, you know, Invicta's deceiving people and this and that, but Rolex watches, some of these Rolex watches right now are going for twice retail. They're, and they claim that there's a Rolex shortage and you can't get these Rolexes, but yet people are paying. And people are like, oh, the, bu the bubble's going to burst. And, and that's no, that's not going to happen. People are going, if people, if Rolex knows that somebody's stupid enough to go and buy a watch for twice retail, Either that person really wants that, wants that pre prestige of, of wearing that. Like, I think the Batman is something going for like twice retail right now, which is close to like $18,000. Um, you know, and I'm not a Rolex expert. It's based on what I've been watching, what I've been hearing. Um, but that is what some of these are going for. And the retail price, that's almost twice retail. And so people, they're charging that because people are stupid enough to buy it. So just put this in perspective here. If you're stating that Rolex, Rolex watch is awesome, like it, like you're, it's, it ships on every other brand, every other brand sucks, and you have to have that. It's a great watch. It's worth 9000 Suddenly now that watch is worth 18000 but it's a $9,000 watch. So how is it fair to go, go bashing a company because they have an MSRP? Rolex is even worse because they're giving you an MSRP of half of what people are actually selling it for. And then claim that there is a shortage and that people can't get these watches, and that may be so. But what I also the other thing I wanted to come at, um, 
kind of comment on is the fact some of these people who are just Rolex, I mean, fanatics and snobs, uh, not all of them, just I'm just saying some of these people are now complaining that the watches are too expensive. You know, like, first of all, I would never spend $10,000 on a watch. I would never spend $5,000 on a watch. I think there are so many great watches out there in the entry level price points of 300 to 500. It's like my sweet spot. Even five, I don't really want to go that, that high. Anyway, you know, I have so many, I've been kind of slowing down my watch purchases and I still work with companies like Oceaniva, like this bad boy again, they sent me uh, awesome watch, happy to have it. Love to share it with you guys. Cause there is a watch out there for everyone, no matter what you like. Small watches, big watches, you know, dress watches, dive watches. There is something out there for everybody. And it's the kind of hobby where you can, you know, you should be able to appreciate all watches, you know. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of these guys out there who are what I call the snobs um, just don't think that way. And so now they're whining that these watches are expensive. Well, dude, you know, this is the way it is. This is supply and demand. If you want a Batman, you're going to pay for it. And people are very happy to rip you off to get it. And But now you can't whine about it because all these people... You know, hype this watch up, hype it up. That really is what it is. It's hype. It, it, there's no reason that watch cost eighteen thousand dollars when you could have got it for not for nine thousand. And if you paid nine thousand for it, I mean, come on, it's just it's asinine to me. And that's just my opinion. I just wanted to come out and put that out there. Uh, there's lots of great watches, and I feel that if you're whining now about the price, you really can't afford it. And I've seen some of these Rolex watches that other YouTubers have reviewed that are like vintage, are going for like four thousand dollars that have open end links or hollow end links, uh, tapped uh, screws in the sides where the push pins go in. Again, I'm not a jeweler, so don't quote me exactly on whether I'm using the right terminology, but I mean, played out stamped band. I mean, you get more watch in a $80 grand diver, a pro diver, than you ever do in that old busted up Rolex. Uh, you're paying for the name. You're paying because it's vintage. You know, it's just asinine to me. Again, always buy what you like enjoy it you know I, I never I don't you know I mean I get plenty of homage watches that were sent to me I wear them obviously I'm wearing one today it's not a bad looking watch but it's a basic watch and you really are paying for the name because nobody needs to spend nine thousand dollars to tell time I'm sorry you, you want that on your wrist because you're gonna be able to tell people that you have a Rolex on your wrist even though that Rolex watch is no better than this Ocean Eva okay Salida movement I mean great fit and finish wonderful looking watch the differences between you're gonna find on a Rolex you really have to put that under a macro lens and really have somebody who's an expert on a Rolex pinpoint all those meaningless details that you're gonna be paying eighteen thousand dollars for I'm sorry it's just it's it's just asinine it really is but again buy what you like enjoy it um, I, if you were wearing a Rolex, I definitely, if somebody has had one again, I, anytime I see one, I'm like, hey, do you mind if I check it out? Always, because I appreciate the brand as well. Just, it's not a brand for me. It's just way too expensive. I don't care what I ever ever make. I'll, I'll never rationalize spending that because I just don't like it enough to, to for me to warrant that. I This is just as nice, you know, so uh, in my opinion, of course. So guys, this is my two cents on this whole Rolex nonsense, um, you know, um, you know, the, the bubble's not going to burst. If people are going to buy them, that, then that's... Eventually, they'll up the MSRP, you know, and then that, that'll be the going price of these watches. So, again, investment purposes, uh, you know, if you go out and buy a Rolex Batman for $18,000 and you're like, oh, well, it's an investment, uh, not necessarily. That may watch, maybe people are going to be like, that's too expensive. And next, you know, you might want to get rid of it and then you have to sell it for 15 or 16 so it's never a guarantee that anything's going to be an investment um, with anything. I mean, there's never a guarantee with anything. There are safe things to invest in, like real estate and stuff like that. But um, again, nothing is a guarantee. So just my two cents, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have uh, any kind of... I put up these videos sometimes to, to hear what you guys have to say, to get your opinions. Have you post those and let me know and discuss it, talk about it. And uh, let me know what you think, guys. As always, if you enjoy the content, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you have any questions about Oceaniva, I'm here to help. And you guys enjoy your weekend. Take care.